Welcome back everyone, I'm Cosmo and you're watching the Cosmodo channel. I can still see my breath in the garage, it's still cold outside, but we've got warm weather coming soon and I want to uh, have a bike to ride. So today I'm going to switch it up a bit and work with my 1978 Yamaha DT175. It blew a left main seal, which some of you who own a DT175 uh, may know that it's a common issue, especially if they've never been replaced before. I have a feeling that this seal has never been replaced before, so it's you know 40 odd years old and definitely in need of replacing because it started leaking all over the place. Uh, I have a new seal, I have I think all the tools that I need, so I'm going to get right into it. I'm going to start by draining the oil and we'll go from there. This is probably drained enough. It seems like there wasn't much oil in there to begin with. Probably explains why it was shifting poorly. It explains a lot of things. Yeah, there's still still a decent stream coming out. I mean, it's not a huge stream, but... The first thing I'm going to do while the oil is draining is take off this uh, side cover. As uh, that's, you know, where the seal is behind. So, we'll start by taking all these bolts off. And there's no gasket here. <laughs> I'll have to get all this goop off. Good thing I have a spare gasket. Okay, now we gotta get the magneto off. Have this handy strap wrench that I'm gonna use to hold on to the magneto. There we go. I don't know if you guys saw that, I had to lean in, but uh, yeah, I was able to get this in there. That's what she said. Now, I need my handy tool. Flywheel puller. Oh. Oh, it's going in. Screw this guy in. I think that means it's off. Could also mean I killed something. <laughs> this whole crankshaft is cracked. Oh, that'd be bad. There we go. Alrighty guys, check it out. I wanted to uh, show it on the better camera. But as you can see, there's a bunch of residue right here. That's from the oil leaking out from behind the starter plate. So I'm gonna get the starter plate off and then we'll be able to get at the seal. It's important to mention that there is a timing mark. So above that top screw, there is a little notch in the plate and in the cases that basically has to be aligned for your timing to be correct. Uh, when you're putting it back together, just make sure that those two notches are aligned and you won't have any issues with your timing. Yeah, just wanted to mention that. Unfortunately, I noticed that uh, both of these screws are stripped. So I have to come up with a different plan to get them off. Really, I'm not, I'm not sure what I can do because I can't even get a Dremel in here to make a slot. Um, I don't know. I have to brainstorm. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah. Mwah. Okay, guys, I got both of the screws out. I don't know how much I actually filmed, but for the top one, I had to drill a hole and uh, use an extractor, like an easy out. For the bottom one, unfortunately, when I started drilling it, I broke a smaller... Uh, drill bit in there which prevented me from drilling it with other ones so I basically took a really really thick drill bit about you know the thickness of my finger and just drilled the head off I drilled the head off and I got the washer off and yeah now I gotta clean up all this all this metal dust because I don't want that in my magneto in my statter and yeah gotta clean that up and we'll go from there let me show you the screws so this is the one that I had to get out with an extractor. It's pretty uh, pretty mangled on the inside. And this guy is the one that I spared no savagery on and just, you know, straight up beheaded it. To set an example for all the other seized screws. I wanted to clean up a bit before I kept filming. And as I was cleaning the statter and the cases and everything, 
I discovered something kind of annoying, kind of, uh, no, no, you know, just, just really annoying. Look at this. Both of these screws were completely loose. And by completely loose, I don't mean like a couple of threads in, no. I could, I could just take them in and out like this. It's crazy. I don't know what happened. I can only assume the previous owner didn't tighten them. It definitely explains why I was hearing rattling in my engine, so there's that. Uh, I don't think my seal is leaking. I think the oil was leaking out of these guys. So, there is that. But, since I'm here, I think I might do the seal anyway. I don't know how old it is. I might as well just do it. So, let's get this old one out. Gonna clean the shaft off. Just ever so slightly. And I'm gonna use these picks to try and get the oil seal out without scratching the shaft. Or Or the cases. <laughs> Let's compare it with the other seal. Well guys, the huh, can't see it because of my microphone. <laughs> the old seal and the new seal are identical, which it's hard to say if this is a newer seal or not, as in not the original. It could be the original, could be not, it doesn't matter at this point because it's out. Let's get this guy in. The new seal is in, however, as you saw, I don't have a proper uh, tool to seed the seal. I'm going to go and try and get some PVC piping tomorrow to hopefully uh, you know, whack it in there straight. But it seems okay. At the end of the day, I, uh, you know, I'll get some better screws for here, probably some Allen bolts. And that way, if I did mess up the seal, then I'll be able to redo it fairly quickly with another one. Fingers crossed, I guess. I actually just found these guys right here, which are perfect because they have a very wide, uh, wide head. So I don't need to use a washer. They're the perfect thread, they're the perfect height. So technically, I could put all this back together today. I wasn't going to finish this tonight because I thought I didn't have the right hardware to replace those stripped screws. And I also wasn't sure if I uh, put the seal in properly. I don't know if it's straight in there, but it looks straight and I want to stop being a perfectionist. I, I'm i sure it's fine. It seems like the part that's actually making contact with the inside of the case is fully in there. So I think it'll be okay. If it leaks again, I will do the job again and I will have learned my lesson the hard way, I suppose. <laughs> so without further ado, I'm going to start reassembling this. I'm going to put some Loctite on those two bolts that were uh, entirely loose and check all the other ones. Hopefully they're also tight. All right, let's get into it. I'm getting a little tired. It doesn't seem like I'm going to be able to finish this today after all. Excuse my appearance. Um, the Woodruff key for the Magneto is, uh, well, it's broken. So I have to order a new Woodruff key and uh, kind of throws a wrench in all my plants, but I didn't know there would be so much broken stuff in here when I, op when I cracked it open. So I am going to have to uh, continue this video another day, but for you guys, it's going to be a couple of seconds. One eternity later. And eight days later, we are back. <laughs> took uh, quite a bit to get that Woodruff key. They told me it would be two to three days. Took like eight days. I have it now. That's all that matters. I actually got two just in case, uh, you know, maybe future repairs or whatever. Got some Gorilla Glue so that I can seal up that uh, that little nick on the stator coil so that it doesn't, uh, you know, arc up against anything. 
And by arc up, I mean touch up against another metal component, potentially. What else? Oh yeah, I 3D printed a hex bolt cap. See the difference? Did a little 3D printing in the meantime. I got a 3D printer from my dad. So, that's pretty cool. I, uh, not sure what else I'm going to 3D print. I've just been messing around, but should be pretty cool. Also, I told you guys how I was worried about uh, not knowing if I seated that seal properly. So, I brought a vernier, and I'm going to measure the seal from all sides in reference to the cases. And if it's even on all sides, then I'm going to stop worrying. If it's not, I'm going to tap it in, since I have room to tap it in. Uh, but if you're doing that, make sure you don't tap it in too far in. Had a buddy that did that, leaked. Don't do that. Enough blabbering, let's get right into this. I want to bang this out. That's what she said. <laughs> it should have been a quick fix, and it turned into like a one and a half week ordeal. So let's get it over with. Glue. quite a bit on there but hopefully it'll be okay should be okay well I'm gonna let that cure a bit and measure the seal next I suppose and then once that is good gonna get the woodruff key out the old woodruff key that seized up in there uh, probably should have gotten the woodruff key before I replaced the seal however I didn't know there was a woodruff key in there because it's like smoothed over and blended in with the shaft so Bamboozled me. Always got to do things backwards. Swapped out the battery in the camera so that it doesn't die. Pretty sure the uh, the crazy glue is, or the Gorilla super glue is relatively cured by now. I'm going to check how far in the seal is. In about, I don't know, maybe, probably four locations is fine. I'm being OCD about this. <laughs> Not actually, but you know what I mean. I just don't want to have to take it apart again. I'll do it, but I want to avoid doing it. So I'm going to set the camera up again. Whip out the caliper and uh, check the measurements. Alright, it's definitely out. So I'm going to give it a couple of taps with something. I'll have to find something. And uh, yeah, we'll get it right. Glad I checked. Was annoying and only because I made it really annoying by uh, <laughs> wanting to get it as perfect as I could which really I know this whole process was super cringy because I should have just gotten uh, gotten like a PVC pipe from the get-go uh, something that's large enough to fit over the shaft and you know large enough to actually tap the uh, the seal in uniformly but I didn't do that <laughs> Uh, I did it the dumb way, so don't do what I did. I think it's more or less even in there. I'm gonna wipe it down, and I'm gonna start reassembling. Ha! <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. I gotta get the Woodruff key out. Yeah, don't know how I'm gonna do that, but hopefully it's an easy one. So I thought I was totally, uh, totally screwed on this, but I used a screwdriver to tap down at the Woodruff key, and uh, lo and behold, ta-da! started coming out so let's keep tapping away at it the so woodruff key goes in now we can put this back on gotta make sure the uh, notches are aligned as I mentioned before put some blue lock down on there
scraped the old gasket off. So we RTV'd this. The bike is back together finally. It uh, didn't take that long actually. I think I did everything right. I torqued down the ro the rotor. <laughs> the Russian and me came out. The rotor nut uh, to the proper spec. Uh, everything else isn't too critical, so I just did it by feel. Um, once again, I think I did everything right. Just needs to be filled up with oil. It's way too cold to start it. It will never start in this weather. These carbs, uh, actually, sorry, it will start. I can start it with like starter fluid or something, but the carb in this weather just doesn't seem to want to uh, uh, suck any fuel from the gas tank. So at least it's ready for the next warm day, <laughs> which is uh, kind of the idea. Next thing is to rebuild the forks. Shouldn't be too hard either. And I think I have everything for that. Uh, you know, there are no funky Woodruff keys that are going to pop out at me. <laughs> but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it was informative to those who are doing a uh, left side main seal swap on uh, DT175. It's relatively easy. Uh, as you can see, I pretty much ran into all the issues I could have run into. Hope you can learn from it and hope you don't make the same mistakes. Hope you can refine my method because it was definitely crude. It is what it is. If I pooched it, next time I'll do it. 115%. Alrighty guys, it's cold. I'm gonna go warm up. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.